as a hip hop pioneer, would you want someone copying your style? If you're going to get your sound and style from someone else, you'd at least pay homage, right? Well, then again, how do you really know if someone is copying you and what do you do if you perceive that they are? I guess misunderstandings are bound to happen. What comes next is what we call rap beef. This is Cool Mo D versus LL Cool J. Cool Mo D originates from the group Treacherous 3, one of the first hip hop groups to release an album and was signed to a historic hip hop record label Sugar Hill Records in the early 80s. Apparently, this beef started when Cool Mo D felt that LL Cool J was copying his rap style. This is a pretty common thing in hip hop beef, it seems. Outside of beef that starts in the streets, copying is one of the other biggest reasons. In some cases, it is true though, and I can understand being upset about it. In November 1987, Cool Mo D released his second solo album, How You Like Me Now. And on the album cover is Cool Mo D standing in front of a Jeep with a red Kangol hat underneath the wheel of the vehicle. Kangols at the time were the signature hat of LL Cool J, which was perceived as a diss to him, igniting the beef. The title track of the album, also released as the first single, features Cool Mo D sending shots at a rapper who is jocking his style. He doesn't mention LL by name, but makes it pretty clear in the third verse that he's referring to him with the line, I'm bigger and better, forget about Deffer. Which is a reference to Bigger and Deffer, LL Cool J's second studio album. In January 1988, LL responded to Cool Mo D with the track Jack the Ripper from the B-side of his single Going Back to Cali, which was featured on the soundtrack of the film Less Than Zero. Both songs were also featured on his third album, Walking with a Panther, released in June 1989. I mentioned this track in my video covering LL Cool J's beef with cannabis, which took place several years later. The diss tracks, Rip the Jacker and The Ripper Strikes Back, were based on this track right here. LL Cool J uses infamous serial killer nicknamed Jack the Ripper from London, England to rip Cool Mo D to shreds lyrically. Side note, the Jack the Ripper killings apparently took place in 1888, 100 years prior to the beef. I don't know if LL Cool J did that on purpose, but who knows. Like the previous diss track in this beef, LL Cool J doesn't name Cool Mo D directly, but has lines indicating that he is indeed talking about Modi, namely with the start of his fourth verse being How You Like Me Now, an obvious callback to the song Cool Modi dissed LL on. This is probably one of the more well-known diss tracks of the 80s and led to Cool Modi responding the next year on his third album, Knowledge Is King, released in May 1989 on the song Let's Go. Cool Modi comes directly at LL Cool J from the intro of the track, no longer a subliminal diss, he admits that he baited LL into the beef with his album cover from How You Like Me Now, and he responds to multiple lines from Jack the Ripper. Throughout the track, he mentions more about how LL Cool J is copying his rap style. He also claims that LL Cool J isn't as intellectual with his lines compared to him, and that he's just spitting out braggadocious lines and talking tough. The amount of times Cool Mo D reminds LL Cool J to stop riding his jock is pretty funny. Like, he clearly thinks LL Cool J copied his style for real. If he did for sure is unknown, but still this was a pretty good track. He really broke down LL here, even telling him to stick to the love songs and showing off his body rather than trying to rhyme well. As I've mentioned in the previous video about an LL beef, he was well known for making love songs. At this point, he already had songs out like I Need Love, one of his biggest hits and most of his singles would be the love song type. Probably the best part of this song, however, is in the third verse where Kumo D uses alliteration to mock the LL in LL Cool J's name. Lower level, lackluster, limp lover, etc, etc. It's pretty clever usage of the LL, which stands for ladies love, but he managed to flip it on him, as well as once again go at his female fan persona he was building at the time. This is easily one of the best diss tracks in this beef thanks to lines like that. Lyricism in diss tracks sometimes seems to get overshadowed by things like empty threats or brags about stuff like record sales. LL Cool J responded to Cool Mo D on his next album, Mama Said Knock You Out, released in September 1990 on the title track as well as To The Break Of Dawn. Both were released as singles and To The Break Of Dawn was also on the soundtrack of the first House Party movie. To The Break Of Dawn was not just aimed at Cool Mo D, however. LL dissed both Ice-T as well as MC Hammer apparently because of shots they took at LL. MC Hammer on the song Let's Get It Started from his debut studio album mentions that he's second to none from Ducky Fresh to LL or DJ Run, which prompted the response from LL. Ice-T on his song I'm Your Pusher from his second studio album has a skit where he talks to a fiend about hip hop and offers him Cool Mo D music, to which he accepts it, but then offers him LL Cool J music and gets denied. LL apparently took offense to this as well, understandably so as he has a beef with Cool Mo D at the time and this can be seen as Ice-T choosing sides. The first verse of To The Break Of Dawn is directed at Cool Mo D, 
with the second and third verses sending shots at MC Hammer and Ice-T respectively. To cool Mo D, he insults his appearance from his teeth, skin, and the sunglasses he wore on his third album cover, Knowledge is King, as well as dissing his ability to pick up chicks. Compared to Cool Mo D's response, this just wasn't as strong in return, but to be fair, he was responding to multiple artists on this track. It wasn't solely focused on Mo D. A line that stands out though is, now you're getting done without Vaseline, as it was sampled for the chorus of the song, No Vaseline by Ice Cube, the notorious diss track aimed at MWA. It would seem LL Cool J wasn't playing around here though, as he dedicated a verse to each of the rappers that simply mentioned him in one line of their respective songs. On that same album was the title track, Mama Said Knock You Out, which also took shots at Cool Mo D. This is one of the best songs by LL Cool J. That beat is iconic and it's a great song in hip hop, especially from the early 90s. The song is extremely braggadocious as LL has been in previous songs, but he ramps it up a bit here and the whole song could be seen as a general diss to Cool Mo D and anyone else who has something bad to say about him and his music. In typical hip hop form, one of the best ways to come back from a harsh diss is to make a hit song, which LL did here without a doubt. The chorus itself is iconic too, Mama Said Knock You Out, and that's just what he did here. It's one of those hip hop anthems that makes you want to get up and fight. The video along with it, with LL Cool J in the boxing ring with his gloves on lets you know he's not messing around with the competition. He shedded, at least for this song, that love song stuff he was known in this for and proved he wasn't a one trick pony. In June 1991, Kumo D released his fourth solo album, Funky Funky Wisdom, which had the single Death Blow, where he came back at LL Cool J and responded to Mama Said Knock You Out. The music video parodies the one for Mama Said Knock You Out and has an LL Cool J lookalike in the boxing ring with a microphone and all that. Once again, Cool Mo D goes directly at LL here and disses him for once again copying his style and even calls him Todd Jr. and other lines likening himself to LL Cool J's father and disciplining him like a father would do to her son. Lyrically, Mo D did his thing here again. Remember when I said in his previous song Let's Go, he did the lines of alliteration with the letter L? Well, he does that again here flexing his vocabulary. It's another enjoyable lyrical exercise from Cool Mo D. As far as I know, this will be the last diss track Mo D released aimed at LL Cool J, hence the name Death Below. Lyrically, he did indeed put the beef to rest for the most part. Some would side with Cool Mo D, and some would side with LL. The beef would be pretty much calm for a while until in 1995, the last track where one of the two would directly mention the other was released. That being the remix of the song I Shot Ya from LL Cool J's sixth album, Mr. Smith, released in November 1995. The song features Keith Murray, Prodigy from Mob Deep, Fat Joe, and Foxy Brown, with LL Cool J going last. He starts his verse off stating that he has crushed the three artists that he had beef with recently. Cool Mo D, MC Hammer, and Ice-T, the artist he dissed on To The Break Of Dawn, and goes on to spit more braggadocious lines, furthermore emphasizing the idea that he's won all his rap beefs. This would wrap up the beef. Cool Mo D claims himself the victor, obviously with Death Blow, and LL Cool J on the I Shot remix claims of course to have won as well. Overall, musically, Cool Mo D wins this easily for me based on the diss tracks. From a lyricism point of view, he just outclasses LL. LL's only real disses were the typical making hit songs, selling more albums, and being more attracted to the ladies and whatnot. This was a pretty long-lasting beef going on for almost a decade of releasing songs back and forth. It doesn't seem that it was ever officially squashed publicly, but the diss tracks did stop, and I would assume that the two are past the situation now at this point. Once again, it's a beef that was largely left on wax and resulted in some decent tracks being released. Cool Mo D had a pretty long career in music, including his work for The Treacherous 3 going back to the late 70s. He also released 5 solo albums as well as greatest hits albums and was among the first rappers to ever win a Grammy, among other accolades. For whatever reason, he stopped putting out music however after his 5th solo album. LL Cool J on the other hand had an extensive career still after the beef especially in film, as I've mentioned in the previous video, talking about his beef with cannabis. Good music, good disses, good stuff. Now what do you think about this beef, and which one would you like me to cover next? Let me know in the comment section below, and as always, thanks for watching, remember to subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more.